So as I mentioned last week, this is going to be a series with another pet casket build. I mentioned that this one was going to be more traditional and as you can see, it is more traditional than the other one. Um, I am still going to title this one as a DIY build and I might get a little bit of pushback for that. But with both of these caskets, I tried to use tools like the table saw and the radial arm saw that if you don't have a table saw or a radial arm saw or a chop saw, you could still make a lot of these cuts with a circular saw. It might not be as accurate and it might take a little bit longer, but I still think you would have the capabilities to build something like this. But just the heads up, this would probably be considered um, advanced DIY. Um, once again, I am planning on making uh, building plans for this one. This one and the other pet casket, they'll both be free. Um, I'm actually almost done with the ones for the first casket. This one might take a little bit longer because obviously it's a lot more detailed. I designed this to kind of have these shadow boxes on the side that can be customized to suit your pet, which is what I did for this one. And um, the only real design flaw I have on this one so far is because this rope molding wraps around the edge, the lid is kind of nestled in place, which is nice. It keeps it from moving around, but it does take, make it a little bit difficult to get off. Um, I decided not to add a handle or anything just because the this is not a utilitarian piece of furniture. You're probably only going to take the lid off a handful of times. It's not overtly difficult it still comes off. It's just not as easy as something with hinges and a handle, but that is the lid and this is the uh, inside. So the bulk of this one, unlike the other one, was made from birch veneer cabinet grade plywood. The moldings and whatnot obviously are going to be, I believe they're mostly pine, so a little bit different than the other one. And I did use brads on this one, which I'm actually kind of regretting because it's always a little hard to cover up those holes but on this one, they do show a little bit more prominently than I would have hoped. But the good news about these two is, because um, the first one was for a customer, I did find out that his pet is still alive, and so is the pet for this one. But um, I do like to preemptively plan these for my own pets, which is what my customer did as well, especially something like this. Um, if you're trying to get this from a maker, now Etsy's a little bit different because a lot of that stuff they have a specialized made to order order on there. But for someone like me, I ha usually have a three month waiting list at this point. So um, I couldn't make something like this extremely quickly. A simpler design, sure, but not something like this. So that is pretty much the deal with this. This series is gonna be at least two parts. It might be three, um, I, I don't know yet. But once the plans for this one and the other one are done, they'll just be in the, the link in the description to get those. So just like the first cabinet build, I'm going to be working off of interior dimensions and going from there. So that's what I have written down the paper. If you want to build something similar to this, this will be very easy to scale up or down to suit your needs. Now I just finished a rather large built-in, so I have a ton of three-quarter inch cabinet grade plywood laying around the shop. So that's what I'm going to use. It was already cut to rough size from that project. Four pieces that were uh, the same size, they were cut off from a part of a cabinet. So all I did was trim them down to size and then I'm going to cut them down to height on the table saw so to get my four pieces and um, I'm going to go from there so this is to eight inches at this point and I'm going to be joining these with half laps in order and that will leave me with the flanges on the edges and that will also leave me with the beginning of the the shadow box like design so I'm coming in three inches from the edge and then I'm marking a three quarter inch mark with a piece of ply and I'm going to do half laps on all of these. Now this is eight inches so I can only go up three inches with my table saw so I'll have to do the other inch by hand. But I'm just marking everything. I don't always mark all my pieces but I for, sometimes for videos I'll mark everything so people can see what I'm doing. And then I just have a stop on my table saw so it will cut through on that far side. 
so like I said, I have the blade raised to three inches. I'm using the miter gauge in that stop. I could flip it and cut that far side mark on all of my pieces. That stop will make sure that that mark is in the same exact spot for all of my pieces, which is very important for um, doing this sort of method. So then I'm remarking where that plywood is. This plywood's three quarters inch, but it's not actually three quarters of an inch. It's usually a little bit thinner. So I remarked and I'm going to slide this over so it will cut the uh, outside edge there and then I could go through and cut these all again with that that new mark so you might notice in the video because I'm using a tape tape measure and me measuring three quarters that my marks don't necessarily line up but they'll all be the exact same size essentially because this plywood's usually like 23 30 seconds or, or something like that so like I said, you could see I'm left with a little bit. I decided to cut these with a handsaw. I'm pretty proficient at a, with a handsaw at this stage in the game. So all I did was just clamp a straight edge there to use as a guide, and I just cut up to, to my edge. If you have a jigsaw or a bandsaw, it would be really good for this. Um, you don't have to use a handsaw, but I decided to use a handsaw to finish cutting these pieces. You can see it leaves a pretty pretty straight mark and then I'm using a, a 5 8 inch spade bit to remove the rest because like I said this ply is a little thinner than 3 quarters so a, a 3 quarter inch bit would be too wide the 5 8 inch will, will remove just about enough so I just came down um, 5 16 because that will be half of 5 8 made a mark and then I could drill drill these out and that's how I, I clean these up once again if you have a jigsaw or a bandsaw you could use that as well I'm using the drill press because I have one, but you could hand drill these. It's, a, it's not super imperative that they're straight because you could sand them down um, at the end. And I always drill through about three quarters of the way on the front side and then drill through the back so I don't want to get any blowout. And then I just take a chisel and uh, chisel up that little bit of material. Plywood's really easy to chisel. It just kind of leaves a mess because you're going through the plies. And then, like I said, you could use um, a file to clean clean up that edge. And then this is the box. Now, this was my first mistake on this. One of the problems with filming and now writing down dimensions is I do get distracted quite easily. And I made these all the exact same size. So I didn't account for the fact that two of my sides are shorter. Did not realize it until I put this together. So I'm going to have to take this apart. And you could see I'm just going to adjust it by cutting down the ends of two. I don't have to recut the whole thing. Just cutting down the ends of two, you could see, and then marking again for that those laps. I still had everything set up, so it was pretty easy to redo. Um, not a terrible mistake, maybe 15 minutes of extra work, but then that is now what it looks like. Everything's sliding together. You want to make sure all your tops are flush. It will make your life a lot easier going going forward if if those tops are all flush. You can see how nicely this slides together and then holds itself together as well. So then I put some tape on the outside of all of the pieces because I'm going to be cutting a half inch dado a half inch up from the bottom that's pretty standard for where I'm putting my my uh, bases on these and that will hold the base of the box sometimes I use quarter inch ply but I didn't have any in the shop so I'm using half inch for this you could see I already miscut this one even though I had the tape on there um, this was one of those days in the shop where I left early because I was just making a lot of stupid mistakes then on the top side I'm also gonna cut um, the exact same dado, but on the bottom I went three eighths of an inch deep. On the top I'm only going to go a quarter and I'm going to leave a little stem in the middle. These panels are going to get a ton more dados and rabbit cuts and it won't make a lot of sense until you see how it all goes together. So you can cut all these side panels at once if you're following the plans. It should fit together pretty well um, and then then you, you have the basis of your box. You can see on both sides I did a uh, a half inch rabbit, a quarter inch down on both sides, leaving a little quarter inch nub, and then a half inch dado on the bottom coming up a half inch. And you could see all I did was I took a little piece of half inch ply and I filled in that dado I cut. Once I once it dried and I trimmed the edges, you can't even tell that I, I miscut that. So this is the bottom. 
once I had all that done, I just measured the inner dimension of the bottom. I added on a half inch uh, times two because you're a half inch on both sides and then you could see the bottom slides into place. Now the problem with the edge, because this slides all, with, all the way together, is it won't go past my bottom. So what I have to do in order to fix that is just, you can see the pencil mark for where the bottom meet, uh, will hit it, and I just trimmed off a little bit on there. Now if you want to, you could go back and add a cleat on the bottom, but since this is a pretty small box, even with this piece trimmed out, my bottom still doesn't move. So I just left it this way. So it's pretty easy to trim this because it lined up right with one of the plies so it came off pretty easy and then I just sanded it clean and then this could slide on over that piece. And then at this point this is super sturdy. Let's see how that base fits in there. So then for the bottom this is the molding I'm using. Um, I mostly picked this just because it's it's getting harder and harder to find uh, unpainted, unprimed non-MDF or non-composite moldings in the stores. So this was the one they had that, that was just plain wood. I marked how high that molding was going to come and then that's going to be the basis for the rest of my cuts, the height of that molding. I went through and marked, put X's on all of these pieces because I'm going to be putting a perimeter dado around the edge and then a dado on the inside as well. So you could see I have that. The height on this is going to be the same for all the moldings. So you could see I'm going to run, um, once again, I'm doing a quarter inch dado on across all of the pieces. Now on the inside, I don't want that, ado, that dado to go across the whole inside. So you could see I'm lowering the panels onto place. And like I said, all of these cuts are not really going to make sense until towards the end of the video when you see how I pull this all together. So this on the outside, I'm getting a full dado, but then on the inside, I'm only going enough to, to hit those outer flanges. I don't want that dado on the inside of the box. If you're gonna be lining this with something, like with cushions, you can put that dado on the inside of the box. It's not gonna, not gonna hurt it. See that one spot, I went a little too far. So there it is on the outside, as well as on the inside, that half inch dado. on all of my pieces. And like I said, it's okay. I went a little bit too far on a couple of these. So then I could fit this whole thing together. So then you'll see when I first cut the dado for the base, you could see on the bottom that one sticks out, but that's going to get covered with the molding. So, so I, you don't have to worry about that. So now what I'm going to do on that, that dado that's on the outside is I'm going to fill it with um, half inch ply and that's going to create the top and the bottom of those shadow, bo shadow box like structures, which is, is what I'm calling them. So I just calculated the, the depth and then I could cut all of these to width and start piecemealing out that, that piece. As you can see, I could just slide those in. This box turned out pretty nice. It's square. You really want to take the time to make things square, especially on this, because it will just keep biting you down the line if it isn't. You can see how that molding is going to come right up and cover that outer side of the ply. And then I'm also doing this on the top as well, and that will create those shadow box-like structures, as well as it will start to create the frame on the top to hold, hold the lid. So that's what all those pieces look like and then I could start and do the corners. At this point was when I decided to not make this a square. I decided to, to angle the corners, which is more work. If you wanna do something like this and you wanna make it a little bit easier, keep your box square. It'll still look really cool and it is, is um, a, a decent amount less work because the angles aren't as complicated. So like I said, you could see how that molding will fit. The squares on the corners were two and a half inches by two and a half inches, and I just marked 45s on them. You'll see how that doesn't work in a minute, and I have to recut them. But originally, there's the 45s. You can see the problem for that is the, the flanges stick out just a little bit. So I had to mark from that inner edge to the inner edge on the bottom, which gives me a 45, but with a little extra material. 
you could see how that is there and I just had to recut those this wasn't a huge deal you can see the how the 45 is just a little bit thicker because I still had like I said this this setup on my table saw it's just a, a little miter gauge for my cross cut sled set at a 45 with the stop so I could cut all of these identical and then those are my little pieces that will fit in there and this is going to be the basic frame of the box after this there's all the angles and the molding to add on the base and then to start with the crown on the top then I just have some photos of what all those pieces look like once you have the measurements for all of these sides and whatnot you can make all four of these pretty quickly um, it looks like a little bit of of work up front but you can make that carcass very quickly and fill in the flanges and then this is just a couple photos of what the finished piece is going to look like you could see how that molding will wrap the bottom as well as the top